So okay. Uh, Let the, so the final so, final talk <laughs> of the session is uh, um, work of uh, Paul Andre Méliès and uh, Nicolas Roland. It's on comprehension and quotient structures in the language of two categories. And uh, the speaker is Nicolas. So welcome to this presentation. Tell me if uh, you cannot hear or if there is any problem. Um, no, it's it looks, okay? Looks okay, yes. Okay, great. So the first question before we dive into the presentation is uh, why uh, uh, would the comprehension be important? And we notice that they appear in, uh, in disguise in various contexts. Um, so this is a, a subject which has been studied before. And um, we won't go into the details of the, the paper, but we will uh, start with a very simple example. And we will revisit a previous definition that appeared in the literature. And uh, we will try to extract in each of those cases the, the two categorical content and uh, the, the essence in a way. And we will try to be uh, structure free as much as possible uh, and stay within the language of ordinary two category. And one exception to this would be this uh, image structure that we uh, identified which links two of those definitions together. And finally, uh, to illustrate the, the power which is granted by the, the general two categorical language, we will apply to uh, algebra, the definition that we have uh, uh, extracted. So let's start with this example, uh, which connects two plain ordinary category. We have a one, um, uh, category on top in the domain of a general functor. And so the category on top, we'll call it the total or extended category. And the category below in the domain, uh, in the codomain, sorry, of the functor, we call it the base category. And typically the, the total category has a lot of structure. So here the objects are the predicates um, seen as a function from some set A to a, a very specific set, which has two elements, false and true. And the morphisms are a function between the, the set A and set B, uh, which we have a, a notion of entailment embedded in the sense that if uh, we require that if uh, the predicate R holds on an element A, we uh, have to, uh, the, the predicate S, uh, in, uh, as a, which is a target of the morphism, has to hold for the, the image f of a. And we have an obvious uh, forgetful functor that forgets the, the predicate and just remembers the set on which the predicate is defined. And in that context, we have a very um, specific peculiar operation, which we call, which is called comprehension, which takes a predicate and it, ref it, it sees it, it describes it as a set, so as a, in a, uh, an object of the underlying, the base category. And specifically, we, we can define this operation comprehend, which is, uh, which associate to a, a predicate, the, the set uh, of the elements of A for which the predicate R holds. So, we can also view that as a, a set of pair of element and with a proof, the unique proofs that the, the, the predicate holds. And we have not only identified a very specific uh, object from the base category, we also have this very special uh, morphism in this case function that go from this uh, uh, kind of reflected predicate to uh, the original set on which the predicate was defined. So this is a, the, the, the basic example of comprehension. And we can uh, note that those uh, operations uh, are functorial. Uh, and the, the map that we have identified, Yota, is, is natural in the sense that uh, it is connecting the, the reflected sets to the underlying uh, set on which the predicate were defined and this square commutes. So that's a basic example of comprehension. And if we look at another example, 
which is um, the category of relation, homogeneous relation on sets. We also have a, an extended category, a total category, the same base category, and its objects are subset of the, the Cartesian product of A with itself. And morphisms also have a, a condition imposed on them. Uh, the morphisms are some functions from A to B, such that if a pair of elements are related by R, the, the pair of the image F of A and F of A prime have to be related by S. Again, we have this forgetful functor. And we have a similar operation to the comprehension, which is uh, this time the quotient that maps a relation to the set of equivalence classes of the, the, the closure, uh, symmetric, uh, transitive, reflexive, the closure of R. And not only have we um, uh, this uh, object, which, which bears an intimate relationship with the, the, the object of a rel, but we have also a, a, a function that maps element of A to uh, element of its equivalence class, to its equivalence class. Um, and so we can see that we have uh, um, a functor likewise uh, that maps an uh, element uh, that goes from rel to set and a family of map, which is natural in the same uh, way. And we can see that both in both cases, we have a, a duality uh, in the sense that a quotient structure on a, a functor P is the same thing as a comprehension structure on the opposite functor. And this is uh, something which was observed by uh, Fimes, Gagné, and Johan. And if we, this motivates uh, the, the paper in a way and uh, motivates us to revisit with a two categorical point of view, the various definition. So the various definition which we encounter in the literature are comprehension categories, D categories by Thomas Erhardt, Lovier category, and TC of vibration. And to, to each of those definitions, we um, propose a, a three layer which correspond to each and uh, we reformulate in this way, uh, in, in the language of two categories, uh, those definitions. The, the benefit of having a two category call point of view is that when we uh, dualize, we obtain a similar hierarchy of quotient structures, quotient with a section and quotient with co-image. Um, so if we, uh, um, another advantage of the, the two, category, two categorical approach is that we can choose any two category we want. So if we take cat, the category of categories, functors, and natural transformation, we find the usual uh, comprehension structures. Um, but we, can, we are free to take any uh, two category. In particular, we will see that when we take uh, uh, a category endo, the endo, endomorphisms on the category, uh, we will find interesting results on algebras. And likewise, when we dualize, when we take a, a, a final coalgebra, we will have a similar result. So the first step to uh, uh, define uh, two categorical comprehension structures is to reformulate the, the first example where we have a simple functor from the extended category to the base category. And uh, as we uh, were uh, uh, illustrating, uh, comprehension is just a functor from E to B and with a natural transformation. So far, so good. Um, but we want to reformulate that um, as a one morphism in a a strange uh, two category, which we will describe. And it goes from P, this, this functor that we started from, uh, to uh, the identity of B. And here we see that we have our two natural transformation, which connects uh, one B composed with comprehension to uh, one B composed with P. Uh, this is already a good start because uh, we have 
if we see that as a one morphism in uh, this uh, two category cat comma lax cat, uh, we have clamped down this functor P. So the objects of cat uh, comma lax cat are the one morphism of cat. The one morphism of cat comma lax cat are uh, uh, one dimensional feeling uh, as a source and target along with the two morphism of cat and the two morphism of cat comma lax cat will be a pair of two dimensional feeling on top and below whose uh, um, post composition and pre composition will be equal to the only three uh, morphism we have in cat which is the identity so uh, a two morphism in cat comma lax cat will impose some commutation on property because uh, we have only one three morphism uh, in uh, two category um, so, can i ask you something yes. uh, <coughs> Yeah, uh, how should I pass lax slice two category? It's it it it's a two category. Yes, it's not a lax. It's a two category, and lax slice qualifies this two category. I would say so. That's <laughs> it's an interesting question. I was uh, I was kind of wondering also <laughs> how to call it. But yes, it's you can think it of a as a comma category with a, a lax cell in the middle. We, we go each object of dimension n corresponds to an object of dimension n plus one in the in cat. So this is the first layer. This is a, something that we encounter as a comprehension categories in the literature. And another thing that we, which is very important uh, in categorical logic is this notion of a section, of course. And um, a section takes an object of the base category and, and maps it to an object in the extended category. So in our example, it would take a set and map it to the constant function, which always answers true. And uh, this is a section, um, uh, we, we, it's uh, trivial. And in the context of our rewriting, uh, this section, uh, we can view it as a strict morphism between the identity and P. So with, equipped with those uh, elements, we can uh, revisit a notion of D category, which was uh, studied by Tomaira. Um, and we extract its two, categor two categorical uh, content or, uh, by an adjunction, but not any adjunction. An adjunction is this category cat uh, slice lax uh, cat over cat. And the fact that this is an adjunction uh, checks in, it, 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 it automatically uh, integrates a, a site condition that, that appears in, a, in, a, in a D categories. Namely, that a iota has to be equal to some um, uh, specific uh, natural morphism. Um, so to see how this uh, condition appears, if we consider any uh, uh, general adjunction in k comma lax k, uh, with k which is a two category, uh, any adjunction um, will generate a pair of two morphisms, the unit and the co-unit. But two morphisms in uh, k comma lax k will be a pair of two morphisms in, in k and in k uh, with some commutation property. And those commutation property will assemble when you when you draw those uh, or you write those equation. It will assemble together to have the result that lambda has to be an isomorphism. So when we precompose lambda by this, we have the identity. We postcompose, we have the identity. So not only does lambda has to be an isomorphism, but rho has to be the mate of the inverse of lambda. So it imposes uh, those condition. Uh, and the, the adjunction in k comma lax k uh, embodies some kind of invariant in a way. Um, concretely, if we take uh, the specific example of a cat for k, we have a natural isomorphism between the home sets coming from the, the uh, any adjunction on, on, on the top here between L, L, uh, L prime and R prime, let's say. Uh, but in our case, where we have uh, an adjunction like the comprehension with section, we have uh, 
the, the condition uh, of the adjunction being in K uh, or cat, comma lax cat, impose that we have a natural isomorphism with some invariant. That is, if we take a arrow from Lx to E, which is above u, uh, in the sense of P of this morphism has to be equal to u, when we, tra we traverse the adjunction, uh, by post-composing by row, we, we have to be equal to u. So sorry, this notation is not standard, but um, uh, it just says that we have some additional invariant compared to some uh, ordinary adjunction. And generally, the adjunction in k, comma lax k, embodies this notion, uh, integrates this notion of invariant, which is useful. So a concrete example, let's, let's stay uh, basic. Uh, if we take any category, uh, you might know that we have this adjunction between the identity functor and the domain functor, but it's not just any adjunction, it's, it's a vertical adjunction actually in that sense, uh, because we have a, a vertical natural uh, family uh, uh, of isomorphism, uh, which means in particular, if you take the, the, the codomain of the co-unit, uh, you have to be equal to the identity. So this checks in um, uh, the, the notion of D category and we extract the two categorical content. And before we go on to the next uh, definition that is encountered, we have to talk about the notion of image structure. So this is not a, any, uh, this is not pure to categorical. This is actually some uh, structure that we, we require and we defined an image structure on the functor P to be um, a section together with a family of morphisms which have to verify three conditions. Uh, so this family is indexed by the morphisms of, of uh, B and each morphism lambda U, first condition have to, has to be over U so that P of lambda U equal U. Another condition is that the domain of those morphisms has to be star of A. So section of the domain of U. And the third condition in the context of this paper is that those morphisms, lambda, are op Cartesian. So those, uh, this definition is a massive relaxation compared to uh, op being an op vibration with a section because we don't um, require op Cartesian morphism on top of every element of E, only at the object star A at the section. An important remark is that once we have such a structure, we can define a functor from B arrow to E. It's very innocent looking, but actually uh, uh, it, it's a different way to talk about functoriality of this uh, functor. Uh, it's a different way um, of talking some of some structural properties of E in the sense of every commutation uh, which occurs in this category has to be uh, 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 reflected in E. And the fact that we have op Cartesian um, morphism in uh, our image structure um, gives us those uh, structural properties that are uh, defined in the paper. Uh, you, you can check details for that. Uh, the fact that it's op Cartesian, we get those uh, structural morphism for free. So this functor associated to every uh, morphism of B, uh, the, the image. So here that is called, uh, there exists U star A, that's how we denote it. Um, and it's not only a functor in, a, in, a, in, in cat, it's actually a functor in cat, uh, comma cat between the codomain and P because we required, if you remember, lambda U to be um, above U so that if we take the, the, the codomain or if we take, uh, the, this, this object has to be above the codomain of U. Okay, so that it's actually, it defines a functor in a cat, cat, comma, cat. So now that we've talked about uh, this uh, uh, image structure, uh, we have to talk about uh, our third definition, our third generalization of uh, comprehension, which is what we call the comprehension with image. So comprehension, with an image on the functor P is a, an image functor from codomain to P together with a right adjoint that goes from P to codomain. 
So uh, one uh, trivial uh, observation. So this notion of image uh, allows us in a way to, to push uh, morphisms of B in E. Um, and it generalizes a, a Lovier comprehension. You, you can see in the hierarchy of the comprehension found in literature. So one trivial observation that we can make is that from a comprehension with image, we can get a comprehension with section uh, by precomposing with the, 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 the example of comprehension with a section that we mentioned. Remember, we had uh, some uh, adjunction from B to B arrow, which we can post compose by uh, uh, a, a morphism from B arrow to E and uh, adjunction compose, and so we would retrieve a comprehension structure with a section. And the uh, astonishing fact um, is that we can uh, recreate, we can, we can find, we can get back a, a comprehension structure with uh, image from a comprehension structure with a section if we have an image structure on P. And so this connects two of the, 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 the layers, the two last layers of the hierarchy of uh, comprehension. Um, sorry, I don't know how much time I have. I had a counter uh, just like, to explain. Like, uh, five, five minutes. OK, OK, so five. we'll go fast now. Um, so an example is application to ex algebras. So, that's where your mind explodes a little bit. And it's very useful to have a, a only two categorical language, two categorical setting, because we can choose a pretty complex category, which is the category of endomorph, the two category of endomorphisms on cat. And all the definition goes through. We don't have to change anything. We just apply the definition and it, it works. All the complexity is hidden here. So this, this category has for object the endomorphisms of cat. So from E to E, the morphisms will be a, a pair of um, a functor and a two cell. Uh, I will show you a picture here, it's, it's much better. So the objects are those endomorphisms from E to E and the morphism will be a single functor P, uh, which is on top and on, at the bottom and a two cell uh, delta. And the two cell will be a single two cell alpha, which has to be on top and below and with the commutation property, just like uh, previously, because we don't have any three morphism in CAT. So this is the, the, the K that we will choose. And if we just write merely the definition that we had previously for comprehension uh, with a section, so this is a drawing in um, uh, uh, K uh, strict K, uh, sorry, K co uh, comma lax K, where K is endo CAT, so those are endo functor. The fact that we have an adjunction in uh, this uh, category uh, implies some condition that this is an isomorphism, that this is the mate of the uh, uh, lambda here, which is the isomorphism. But it also implies that we have an adjunction on top and on bottom. So the adjunction on bottom is trivial, is the identity. But the adjunction on top is not trivial at all because it is itself uh, an adjunction in endocat. So it imposes that sigma uh, has to be uh, an isomorphism and sigma tilde has to be the mate of the inverse. So if we just, this is just a basic definition of a comprehension structure with a section. And just rephrasing it, it means that if we, if we have a comprehension structure with, with a section star and we give ourselves some distributivity law with some property uh, that, uh, so it has to be a section, and sigma has to be reversible, uh, we can lift our comprehension structure with section to a comprehension uh, in, um, in uh, endo, endocat. And we've done nothing. We've just written down the definitions. And if we do almost nothing, uh, we, we apply uh, back and we apply the two functor that go from uh, endo functor to the category of algebra. So it will map F to the, the F algebra, uh, G to the G algebra, and uh, the morphism from F to G to the, the functor from uh, F algebra to G algebra. Then we have this adjunction because it's two functors. So all the adjunction will be transported for free. 
And it's not actually um, just a drawing in two dimension. It's actually in three dimension. You can tilt it. And below, you have the, the other two functor, which is uh, just the underlying of, of this F algebra. And so all this adjunction actually sits on top of our lifted comprehension. And we've done almost nothing. We've just written down the uh, definition. And from this, we can actually deduce a non-trivial um, result. Namely, uh, if we have an initial F algebra, it has to be transported to the, an initial G algebra. Um, we also have that, okay, if we, have, if we start from a, a, a G algebra uh, over the initial algebra, uh, we will have a, a retract to the uh, unique algebra morphism uh, from UF to comprehend E. We can comprehend E. So all those two categorical morphism uh, machinery, it hides a lot of things, and then we get result almost for free. So in a way, it just it simplifies a lot of proofs. Um, and just to be mindful about all the complexity it packs, we can draw the, those diagrams in, in B or E, but uh, it gets unwieldy uh, very fast. Um, that's the end of the presentation. I think I'm out of time. Yes, no, no, you, 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 you are still on time. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I don't know that there, there was uh, some, not really questions, but uh, some discussion going on during the talk between Tom and Paul André. So I don't know if, if one of them wants to say something. So I think that I should unmute Paul André if he wants to say something. Or, uh, or Tom. I we can unmute Tom, I don't know. Uh, Tom, uh, ah, yes, yes, Tom, Tom was, was unmuted, but. Okay, uh, so I think Tom, Tom raised the question, so I can maybe. Uh, yes, yes. Just say, so yes, yeah, so why maybe we could work only on the basis uh, category B that we fix, yes? so. Uh, instead of working in cat double slash uh, cat, we could work in cat double slash b. And uh, in fact, I mean, one when, when reason for, for mentioning cat double slash cat and more generally to work in this uh, uh, you know, wider uh, structure is that, in fact, an adjunction in these uh, two categories has already very, uh, very nice characterization. Uh, that uh, so so this is in, in, in the in the paper we we have its proposition eleven and and uh, and twelve and so what it says is that um, the uh, the the I mean the the in the adjunction one of the two functors ha has a isom isomorphic uh, two cell so um, and so we use that a lot in the constructions. Uh, and this, this, so this property, which is uh, very important, uh, and I think uh, Nicola mentioned it, yes, during, during yes. Uh, the talk, that it, it really clarifies the, many of the definitions of comprehension structures in the literature. Uh, so this property holds not just over an object, but really over any morphism. So, so it's, a, it's a generic property of adjunctions in K uh, double slash K. And that's the reason why we like to work in that uh, framework. And I think, Nicola, maybe you, you can show the nice uh, string diagrams you were showing us. Yes. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm displaying it. Yeah, exactly. If people can. And so here we, and we see the very, very nice phenomenon. Um, yeah. Which is entirely caused by the, the lack of a three morphism in K, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, I have a I have a a question about um, uh, relations. So, so I know comprehension categories in in the in the context of uh, the semantics of um, context uh, well dependent types theory and uh, context extension. So, is is there is there any light on 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 uh, how to use comprehension categories in the understanding of dependent types, the, 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 does this uh, two-categorical understanding help there? 
I would imagine I have some answer, but I, I'm sure that uh, Paul Andre has. No, no, Nicolas, c- c- come on, Nicolas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, I, I'm happy to answer, but uh, yeah. I, I have intuition, but it's more like programmer intuition. So no, no, go, go ahead, please. please. Okay, so, so, so I, I think f- f- first, uh, the definition of um, comprehension is not absolutely clear. In, I mean, it's rigorous, but the definition categorically is a bit uh, uh, subtle, okay? So here, the, the, the key observation is that this is an adjunction in something canonical, which is this cat double slash cat. Yes, so, so that's reassuring and it, it, it really captures the essence of what comprehension is. And so uh, that could be useful if we want to uh, have you know, clever extensions of dependent types. But also it's important if we want to think about questions because uh, questions have been less studied probably, I mean, or quite obviously than comprehension. And yeah. so if we really want to integrate questions in, you know, uh, for instance, dependent types, I think it could be useful to have these uh, dualities, especially if we hope to have a more, you know, linear maybe versions and, and with dualities of dependent types. Anyway, striking this observation that comprehension and quotient are dual. Yes, 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 I like it. <laughs> Okay, um, my, I'm, I'm afraid that we are uh, at the end of the time. So if anyone wants a last, last question, because it's a last, last talk, so we can, we can uh, allow for that two minutes, or if not, one, two, three, four. Okay, so <laughs> thank you, Nicolas, You're and welcome. thank to all the speakers, and I'm happy that uh, everything went apparently nicely. Oh, um, there, there's, there's um, sorry, there, there's something from Noam. Uh, nice talk, Nicola. Can you give one or two examples of an image structure that is not an up vibration? Ah, there's a, that's a really easy one, and uh, it's a domain, a domain functor. So vibration, it's not a uh, op vibration. Yeah. And so, the, I mean, so yes, it's a, it's a generalization. Okay. So do you want to to add something, uh, Noam? If I'm not sure he's online. The codomain, of course, is a uh, an image structure as well, because it's a op vibration and it has a section. So maybe while Noam is uh, thinking, you could tell us what the image structure does in that case. It's just mapping the identity to the bottom morphism, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. It's completely true. Okay, so well, I, I think we should we should stop anyway. Yes.